D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Government was established to keep order and protect rights. But what happens when we lose sight of that? What we see taking place today is an erosion of all American rights, in particular an attack on Christianity. Making government into a parent or provider instead of a referee endangers all of our freedoms. You'll see how and what you can do about it on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Americans have gotten the notion of government upside down, and we're paying the price for it in the loss of freedom. Instead of being the keeper of our order, allowing us to go about our business in peace, we have made government an all-intrusive nanny, demanding that it take care of all of our needs, from health care to wages to even giving us feelings of self-esteem. Of course, handing the government that sort of power is a recipe for eventual tyranny. If government is now the provider and the controller, even of individual worth and self-image, what does our culture do with speech and ideas that challenge the cultural norm? such as God's commands. Well, the culture silences them, lest its fragile psyche be cracked. And that's exactly where we stand today. And the future of our freedom seems even more imperiled. Our own David Wright has more. It's no surprise that the radical elites in our government are accumulating power at an alarming rate. Many argue that this threatens our constitutional rights. America is facing a crisis. We have freedom at risk in, in a country that's had it for 240 years. I've never seen anything like the attack on our Constitution. Our First Amendment rights are under attack. And we know that the First Amendment protects freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. And this freedom of religion that's being attacked the most uh, is being directed at Christians as opposed to people of other religions. Christian people are starting to wake up to the threat. Pastors have a very important role as our shepherds, and the shepherds lead the sheep toward safe pasture. And where the left is leading us now is anything but safe pastures. What we see taking place today is an erosion of all American rights, in particular an attack on Christianity. There is an onslaught of attacks on our freedoms coming in the form of legislation through the Congress. And some of the radical pieces of legislation being proposed out there even impose penalties uh, upon places of worship uh, that, that don't share their radical view of the world. And that's just wrong. That's not uh, what the Constitution guarantees. And we need to be able to fight, not just in the court of public opinion, but in the court of law, if need be. That's one of our key elements uh, that comes out of the long game is invoking the Constitution, whether it's on this issue or on free speech or anything else that's guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution. Uh, we're seeing one party government. Now that the Democrats have power in both branches of the elected federal government and the White House, uh, they're trying to shove through two powerful bills uh, that would, I think, finish off freedom in America. They're that dangerous. One is the For the People Act, which would wipe away election safeguards, including voter ID laws. It would federalize elections. The other is the Equality Act, which would criminalize, criminalize Christianity. Uh, it basically elevates uh, sexual rights above all other rights, even those that are explicit in the U.S. Constitution, like freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion. These pieces of legislation, while masquerading as promoting equality and fairness, essentially censor Christian and conservative speech. What we see in our culture and even the censorship we see, these things didn't just happen in the last few days or the last few years even, they've gone back about a decade. Uh, and, and in many cases, decades even before that. Americans 
are losing their right to freedom of speech. Those rights are being threatened at a rate that I've never seen before. It first started on university campuses with speech codes. For many, many years, there were liberal uh, biased and liberal professors on our college campuses, but you could still have a dialogue. In the 90s and early 2000s, we got into political correctness, and today, we see outright cancel culture. This canceling of speech further extends its arm into the mainstream through the rise of social media. Now we have big tech, uh, you know, Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of these leftist agencies, very progressive, that are monitoring American speech and deciding, you know, what is mean and what isn't. And what they're doing is targeting conservatives and it impacts Christians in a way that it doesn't necessarily impact other Americans. Well, essentially, these big tech companies are holding themselves out as being the, uh, uh, the new virtual public square. They are now acting in many ways as kind of the ticket takers uh, as to who can come in. If you got a liberal ticket, come on in. You got a conservative ticket, not so sure. Let's see what you've got to say. That's not free speech. And when speech is no longer free, that's a problem for all of society, and people need to realize that. There's no question that on YouTube, the social issues are the hot button. Everything from race to abortion to same-sex marriage to transgenderism, if you violate the left standards of political correctness here, then there's a good shot they're going to demonetize you. They'll find that you run afoul of their community standards. Thus spawned the phenomenon commonly referred to as cancel culture. With cancel culture, what they have done is pretty much try to marginalize, deplatform, dethrone, silence anyone with whom they disagree. People may find themselves canceled. We have this cancel culture, and they can be canceled over just innocent things, routine things. Christians who advocate traditional marriage, uh, pro-life positions, that's seen as hate speech and people may lose their jobs. While our religious freedoms are at risk here in America, in England, pastors preaching biblical truths are labeled as terrorists. I never ever thought that giving a sermon would lead to me being dismissed and reported for prevent and safeguarding and, and treated in, in such a way. Reverend Bernard Randall, a school chaplain, was reported to the government's terrorist watchdog and forced out of his job simply for preaching a sermon on identity politics. But if the world is mad enough to say that a Church of England minister talking about the Church of England's beliefs is, is an extremist, a violent extremist, if it's mad enough to say that in the first place, someone else might be mad enough to act on it. The political left, they talk about wokeness, that they are woke. This could not be further from the truth. These are dangerous deceived individuals who have no connection to, to reality. In fact, they would argue that there's no true reality that you get to make up your own. Another disturbing tactic used by the radical left to eliminate our basic freedoms predominantly occurs with the threat of a crisis. I think that the whole COVID pandemic has had a huge impact uh, two ways. One, it has allowed uh, people in government to abuse their power shut down churches and treat them differently from other institutions. That, that grates on a lot of people. And, it, and then they realize, hey, the government under liberal leadership does have an agenda against the church. Hmm. Uh, the other thing is that people uh, can see the ways government can use a crisis to its advantage and have to be more alert than ever. That agenda is definitely one that is not one where the people maintain their rights. It's one where there's a concentrating of power and most people will give up their freedoms to the government if they feel threatened and if there's a panic. And so there's a whole strategy built around intentionally creating or capitalizing on a crisis in order to concentrate control. I'm Emmanuel who was the, involved with the Obama campaign, uh, he said, never let a good crisis go to waste. It's an opportunity to push your agenda, which in their case is a big government agenda. So you have a crisis that can be um, 
expand and uh, increased and spread. And when the people have fear and they panic and they feel insecurity for life and property, they want answers and they want solutions. They want it now. And when somebody comes along and says, I can solve it, I just need some emergency powers for the government. With the government continually overreaching and attempting to take away our freedoms, it is clear that there's an anti-American spirit afoot in our culture today. We have reached a point where the government has become so intrusive and it's intrusive in such a way that it wants to dictate, you know, what Americans can do and what they can say and what is hate and what isn't. The government is intruding into areas where it has no business. I mean, it wants to take over everything. At the end of the day, it's about taking down America. It's not about uh, improving the lives of racial and ethnic minorities. It's not about really making everyone equal. It's about taking down America. For decades, too many Christians exempted themselves from the political process because they had created a false dichotomy between preaching the gospel and being salt and light in the culture, as though these were separate callings. As a result, even the right to preach the gospel is increasingly imperiled, as biblical principles are categorized as hate speech, and those freely exercising their Christian religion are hauled up before civil rights tribunals and branded as bigots. Dr. Kennedy shows us how we got here and what we must do to turn back before America goes over the cliff. In this portion of his message, Christian citizenship. Someone who recently traveled abroad, visiting a number of communist countries, came back and was again reminded and astounded at how much freedom we have in this country compared to most of the nations of the world. A freedom which is rapidly becoming a rare commodity in the world in which we live. So remembering the words of Jesus who said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's, we see that we have a double responsibility not only to render unto God those responsibilities which he has directed, but also to render to Caesar those things which are a part of our responsible citizenship. But first, let us notice from whence we came. America began with godly men who came to these shores to worship Jesus Christ. We all came into these parts of America, they said, for one and the same end and aim, to advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was why they came. <clears throat> and they established a godly civilization, so much so that when the famous Frenchman came over here in 1830 and wrote his book, Democracy, he said that America was a righteous nation that there is never a nation where Christianity had such a grasp and grip upon the people, and that America was great because America was good. And if America ever ceased to be good, America would cease to be great. Consider where we have come from that exalted beginning. Now we live in a nation which is filled with dangers, there are many dangerous places that you could be now as an American. There is the danger on our highways with many peoples who are, people who are drunk or under the influence of drugs. There is danger in our slums. There is danger walking down the streets of almost any neighborhood at night today. What happened along the way from Plymouth Rock? Who is responsible? Is it the atheist or the humanist? Upon whom shall we lay the blame? Well, we have to acknowledge that a great deal of the blame must rest upon us, must be laid at the doorstep of the church. We have failed to obey the Great Commission in this country as a whole. 
We have failed to obey the cultural mandate to be involved in every sphere of activity. We have retreated from politics and government and the media and higher education, and we have left it to unbelievers. We have failed to fulfill our responsibilities as citizens. We have failed to obey the command of Christ to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Now, we didn't create this monster with our own hands, but we allowed it to grow up and to take power, where with the power of government and the colleges and the courts and the legislatures and the media, it has wreaked this disaster, this carnage in America today. And therefore, I think we must realize that much of the blame rests with us. Christians have failed to fulfill their responsibilities as citizens in this country. And we have allowed this great blessing of a godly nation to slip through our hands. Religion has left all of the public square, the public spheres, and has retreated within the stained glass walls of the church or the prayer closet. We have left government, we have left politics, we have left media, we have left education, and we have left it for the unbelievers to take over and then to destroy what the founders of this country gave to us with those things. And of course, we can say that there are many preachers who have failed to preach. And I have had laymen lament to me that their preacher will not speak about the great issues of our day because they're too controversial and they don't want to step on anyone's toes. But we can't lay it all at the feet of the preachers because there are many laymen who simply don't want to be bothered. They don't want to hear about it. When will we wake up? I thank God for those in this church who have awakened a long time ago and who are active, who are obeying not only the Great Commission but the cultural mandate, who are not only rendering unto God but they're rendering unto Caesar what they should. The purpose of government is to defend its citizens and to restrain evildoers that we may live godly and peaceable lives. That is the purpose of government. But we have had government that all too often has failed to defend its citizens and has encouraged evildoers rather than restraining them. How do we render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's? First of all, we should pray regularly, faithfully, daily for those who are in power, for our president and vice president, for our cabinet, for their cabinet, the Supreme Court, the Congress, the Senate, the House, and those who rule locally. Secondly, we should register to vote. Voting for non-Christian Americans is a privilege and a responsibility. For Christians, it is a duty demanded by God that we should fulfill. Thirdly, we should become informed so we don't simply walk into a, to a voter's booth and close our eyes and punch holes in things and then get involved. Do more than just vote. Support candidates of your choice. My friends, we can change America. People made it what it is and we can make it what it ought to be. Do you really believe that? Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, and Jesus Christ tells us to be faithful citizens of this country. Remember those men who worked indefatigably, who pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor on producing this country, who are willing to sacrifice everything, and many of them gave their lives that we might enjoy the freedoms and the blessings of this nation but we are letting it slip through our fingers like sand in this generation. We can stop it and we can change it if we'll simply be obedient to what Jesus Christ told us to do and fulfill our responsibilities as Christian citizens. And I believe that we can again see a nation, and this is my dream, 
And I believe it's possible with all of my heart. And I hope that you will believe that it's possible, that we can see again a nation where babies can be conceived and born without the fear of being hacked to pieces in their mother's womb. When we can have a society where drugs are not rampant and where it's safe to walk the streets again. These things are the blessings that Christ can bring to a nation. All the blessings which this nation has enjoyed have come from Jesus Christ. And it's up to us to bring him and his teachings and his gospel back to this country. And of course, ultimately, people need to come to know that gospel of grace, to know him who loved us and died for us that we might have eternal life. And if you are here today or listening to my voice and you do not know him and you've never accepted him as Savior and Lord, then you're part of the problem and not part of the solution. I urge you right now to repent of your sins and to ask him to come into your heart and to change your life, to cleanse you and renew you and transform you and give you a godly heart and mind and a desire for a godly America that we can once more say, God bless America, land of the free. Though he was often attacked for it, Dr. Kennedy never shied away from speaking out on current issues from a biblical perspective. He knew that God is sovereign over every sphere of life, including government and politics. Dr. Kennedy refused to be silent because he knew that we must obey God rather than men, and that the Great Commission includes the call to teach the nations all that God has commanded them. We continue to carry out Dr. Kennedy's mission, and that's why I have written a brand new book I want to share with you. It's called The War on Truth, Biblical Light for the Battle of Our Time. And I will send it to you as my thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll free 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. In this book, just off the press, John Rabe and I follow Dr. Kennedy's lead in applying biblical truth to the key moral, cultural, and political issues of our day. The book features over 100 short, power packed commentaries on topics like socialism the left's war on freedom, and the current gender insanity. It shines light on these controversial issues and helps equip you to speak out in a lucid, succinct, and insightful way. And if you're able to give a generous donation of $100 or more, we will send you the War on Truth book plus our special new DVD program, Hope for the Future of Freedom. This DVD features new interviews with experts like former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, socialism expert Paul Kengor, and Robert Woodson, civil rights veteran and founder of the Woodson Center, who shows how Christian truth can overcome the left's attempts to divide our nation. The DVD also contains hard-hitting reports on the attempts to silence Christians and what to do about it. And as a bonus, we will also include a sermon booklet from Dr. D. James Kennedy featuring his message, Will the Church Forget? Which is perhaps his most urgent call to spiritual arms. That's my new book, The War on Truth, as thanks for your generous donation. And the book plus the new DVD program, Hope for the Future of Freedom, as well as Dr. Kennedy's sermon booklet, Will the Church Forget? All as our thanks for your generous donation of $100 or more. And your kind and much needed gift will now be matched dollar for dollar thanks to our $150,000 Proclaim Freedom Matching Challenge. But only if you give before the end of June, which is the end of our fiscal year. So please, Make your gift right away to see your impact doubled. 
Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. One of the hallmarks of our many faithful supporters is their great concern for the future of freedom and of our nation. The current presidential administration stands poised to do enormous damage to freedom, and they have support in both houses of Congress. But amid the threatening drumbeat of daily assaults on the foundations of America, you may have missed some tremendously good news. In what appears to be a pro-life cultural surge, more than 500 pro-life legislative initiatives have been proposed throughout the states. In recent weeks, governors in Arizona, Oklahoma, Montana, and Idaho have signed bills into law banning the abortions of Down syndrome babies, stopping abortions once a fetal heartbeat can be detected, and many other science and biblically-based restrictions. All of this is happening in the opening months of the most radical pro-abortion presidential administration in American history. You likely haven't heard this great pro-life news because the Marxist leftists in our government, along with their deceptive enablers in the legacy media, have a vested interest in making you feel as if your views are marginal. They create the false impression that you are vastly outnumbered by the radical woke mob that treats abortion as a religious sacrament and seems unable to discern the biological differences between a man and a woman. But this is a cheap trick of the lowest order, and you must not let them intimidate you into silence. The reason these hundreds of pro-life bills have gotten traction is because Christians have stood up and spoken out. They have elected pro-life representatives to their state and local governments. They have done the work of standing for truth. So even in difficult days, remember the biblical admonition, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for being with us. And here's a look at the next truths that transform. Well, there's no doubt that there is a certain amount of indoctrination that happens in a atheistic, humanistic worldview, because you're not allowed to talk about God, Jesus, or your faith of any kind in public schools. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.